Yan. Okay. So, ang pag-uusapan natin is applying 5S on your computer. So, whether uh, nasa classroom tayo, whether nasa bahay tayo, or nasa sooner, of course, sa uh, workplace natin, uh, lagi natin papairalin yung 5S. Kasi ito yung way para maging productive tayo sa trabaho o kaya sa ginagawa po natin. Being as a student, pwede po natin apply sa sarili natin. Kasi uh, it's a discipline for us na nagawa natin ito and may prevent natin yung mga hazards, may prevent natin yung mga danger na which is na i-discuss natin kahapon. Kasi parte din naman to ng uh, occupation, occupational health and safety. Um, ina-apply din nila ito para pagka nag-alam nila kung ano yung magiging uh, magiging hazard or magiging risk, alam nila kung paano. Okay? Next next po natin diyan, 5S methodology, so introduction, you're working with your documents, presentation, graphic and the files all day. So ito naman when it comes to digital kasi uh, for example sa kahit na lang sa, sa PC ninyo or sa ano natin, nakita natin na magulo, okay? Or hindi pa na organize, 'di ba? Wala kang time. Even pagka nasa work, workplace ka naman, uh, which is yung may mga may nagpapa-repairs at araw-araw ba naman, kumbaga wala ka na rin time na may ayos yun, okay? Which is uh, which is lead na possible, for example, yung mga gamit. May mga ano do, mechanical or uh, chemical na pwedeng uh, makaharm ng mga tao. So, papasok yung occupational health and safety doon, which is hindi, hindi nasunod yung standard decision mo, okay? So, hindi nasunod yung mismong methodology ng 5S. No? Na possible pa na magkaroon ng uh, may mga masugatan dyan, may magkaroon ng problema dyan, merong uh, na batuka or na nadulas or something, di ba? Even sa laboratory, yung makikita natin, lahat po yan applicable dito. Okay? If it's just a couple of minutes here and a couple of minutes there, it, it all adds up. But there is better way to stop the file clutter or anything na sinabi ko kanina by managing your files more effectively. For example, yung mga tools, okay? So you're going to sort it and organize it very well. Same as, as files, you will be categorized by file, okay? By images, by music, or other, uh, for example, event or particular department, okay? So digital files are no different than paper files, okay? Sa computer, uh, kung ano man yung ina-apply natin sa digital, yun naman din ang ina-apply natin from, the, uh, from sa anong ginagawa natin for our daily routine. If you don't have a good method organization, so possible, you get lost. What do I mean? Uh, being sa person, kung wala ka discipline sa sarili mo na ayusin, maglinis, diba? it's a part of daily living. Okay? Uh, walang improvement na makikita sa iyo. So, hindi ka productive. Kung baga gusto mo lang, eh, parang one tamad. Okay? Maghihintay ng bayaya. Pero nakita mo, diba? Uh, parang sa bahay natin, o pinaguhugas nga lang tayo ng pinggan. Yung, doon pa lang, diba? Wala tayong discipline. Diba? It's part of 5S, yung, yung cleaning. Okay? Which is, maglilinis ka ng plato, maglilinis ka ng bahay. Organize. Kasi, aayusin mo lahat ng mga plato, yung mga pinaggamitan, yung mga equipment mo. Siyempre, pag ginamit mo rin, ibabalik mo rin. Okay? So, doon na tayo sa 5S. It is a workplace organization method that uses a list of five Japanese words, which is Siri, Seiton, Seiso, Siketsu, and Shitsuke. So, yan yung 5S natin. So, it derived from the Japanese name. Pero may English name din sila later on. So, this list describes how to organize a workspace for efficiency and effectiveness by identifying and storing the items used. Okay? Uh, number one, efficiency. Efficiente ka ay Tagalog. Kung baga, pag ginawa mo to, pag, uh, pag aayos, di ba? Efficiente ka. Kumikilos ka eh. Gumagawa ka. And effective yun para sa'yo. Kasi, na-prove mo na every time na ginagawa mo. And of course, merong, uh, meron ka pang ideya kung paano mo aayusin, paano ka pang maglilinis, your strategies and everything. By identifying and storing the items used, maintaining the areas. Yeah, maintaining the areas and items. At the same time, kasi nakikita mo eh, you're maintaining and sustaining new organizational system. Tandaan ninyo, no, kahit din naman sa pagninegosyo, no, pag na-apply nyo to as a team, eh, smooth ang trabaho nyo. 
Okay? Kahit ikaw ginagawa mo to sa araw-araw, oh, hindi ka na si stress. For example, yung files, hindi magulo. Okay? Kasi naka-organize eh. Nalinis mo na yung mga unnecessary. So ikaw, productive ka. So hindi mo isipin kung ano yung, ay, saan ko ba hinanap to? Pero since meron kang, ano, meron kang standard, alam mo kung nasaan nakalagay. Diba? And then, mabilis yung paggawa mo. Hindi ka na, hindi pag magsasearch ka pa dahil sa dami ng files. Parang it takes a long, long time. Diba? Nakakainis yung ganun. Okay? And sustainable pa. Kasi, um, meron kang, uh, meron, na-apply mo tong standards na to, na-apply mo tong, uh, ganitong procedure mo, hindi ka nahihirapan. Decision-making process usually calls for a dialogue about standardization. Okay, parang sa school din naman, may set of rule, di ba? So, may standards kayo, ganito gagawin, ganito gaganyan. Ganun din, pag nag-business ka na, may standards ka rin, na kailangan sundin ng mga kasamahan mo. Okay, and personally, may standard ka rin dapat sa sarili mo. Di ba? Kung naghahanap ka nga ng jowa, may standard eh. Ikaw pa kaya, personally. Di ba? It builds understanding among employees in how they should do the work. Okay, so what is the purpose? So, number one, nabanggit ko na yung magkaroon ng efficient and effective work. So, of course, is to, the purpose nito is to apply 5S. No? Resulting increase of daily productivity, better organization of your computer or organization, and further compliance with the Office 5S initiative. Okay? So, productivity, nabanggit ko na rin kanina. Magiging smooth, episyente, maayos, Diba? Mas marami ka pa magagawa. Better organization. Dahil sa standardization, hindi kayo nagkakalituhan. Diba? Hindi kayo, alam mo yun, pag nagdedesisyon, hindi puro ganito, ganyan. Diba? Na babali. Okay? May better organization kayo. Maayos ang pagdedesisyon ninyo. And personally, maayos ka rin. Okay? Kasi nakikita sa iyo sa karakter mo. Tandaan nyo, ang 5SS, it reflects also your character. Okay? Kung hindi makita 5S sa inyo, eh baka, di ba, hindi kayo matanggap sa trabaho. Hindi kayo pagkatiwalaan ng mga tao. Kasi walang initiative sa sarili ninyo. Wala kayo standards. Di ba? Wala kayo self-discipline. Okay? Mamaya, didiscuss ko yun. No? E doon pa sa file, di ba? Alam mo kahit sa isang katiting lang na hindi tayo nag apply ng, ng ganitong sistema. Di ba? Makikita na agad yung personality ninyo eh. So, number one, sort or Siri. Okay, is sorting through all the items in the location and removing all unnecessary items for the location. Okay, just like in the picture, parang sa mga bracelet. Ito yung mga bracelet mga nilagay. So, ang dami. Parang ang dami ngayong, ano, ang dami nakalagay dito. So, paano mo siya ayusin? Pwede i particular color, particular shape, or particular size. Okay, parang sa computer, we are sorting, di ba, sa files. So, right click, sort by, ganito, uh, size, date modified, kailan ba na ganito, okay, or yung size ng mismong file, okay. Ito, in the physical, for example, sa bahay mo na lang, no? kung ang gulo ng gamit mo, and sa lasa, for example, maraming papel dyan, so, um, ngayon, isosort mo siya, depende sa kategory mo. Okay, sa files din, you are we're going to sort by um, office, word ba to? Ito ba ay picture? Ito ba ay image? Uh, sorry, uh, music. Okay? Ito ba ay mga PDF files? Okay? Ano bang goal natin? Reduce time loss looking for items by reducing the number at necessary items. So, tatanggali, may mga tatanggalin tayong unnecessary kasi isinasort mo na siya. Kung baga, inaayos mo na siya. Okay? So, in, in this way, pag nagawa mo to una, siyempre, ang tagal, ang gulo. So, it takes a long time para maayos mo. Kasi sobrang gulo na eh. Kahit naman sa workplace mo rin. O araw-araw baka namang may nagpapagawa sa'yo, syempre, o, ang dami nang nakakalat dyan. So, after that, you're going to sort. Di ba? So, it takes a long time para magawa yun. O pati yung bahay mo, magulo. Pati yung computer laboratory, ang gulo. Di ba? It takes a long time. Matrabaho siya sa una. Pero pagka natapos yun, in, in-apply na in-apply, eh di, ang bilis ngayon ng trabaho. Ang bilis ng ginagawa mo. Okay? Sabi, retum, uh, reduce time loss. Number two, reduce the chance of distraction by unnecessary items. Kasi alam mo na, by, by, by particular category. Simplify inspection. Increase the number of available user space, lalo na sa files. Makita mga, oy, may available pa. Kasi nag-delete ka na eh. 
di ba? Sa cycle bin mo. O kahit din sa kwarto mo, maliwalas din yung kwarto mo. O may nakita ka ngayon space. Ano ba pwede ilagay sa space na yon Okay? And increase safety by eliminating obstacles. Yan yung goals natin for the sort. So, implementation. Check all the items in, uh, in location and evaluate whether or not their presence at the location is used for unnecessary. Tingnan mo muna. Magagawin ko ba siya? It is essential. para COVID. Di ba? Um, na ECQ. O, oh, na e-sort. Oh, sino lang isa-sort? Yung mga A4. O, oh, sino yung mga pwede lumabas? O, oh, bigyan ng quarantine pass. Di ba? I- yun yung i-visualize natin. Yung illustration. Di ba? Nakikita natin ngayon kung sino lang yung necessary na lumabas sa bahay para bumili ng goods and services. Ganun din sa atin. Ano namang yung necessary files na kailangan ko na dapat kong isave kasi magagamit ko siya in the future use or magiging resourceful siya sa akin. Kung may mga part naman na hindi naman resourceful, eh, of course, you're going to delete it with that. Tama? O sa laboratory. Diba? Ano yung necessary na dapat na lang sa laboratory? Kung hindi kailangan sa laboratory, ipupull out. Or uh, yung iba doon, i-dispose o kaya itatabi or ibibigay sa particular place na kailangan nila yon remove unnecessary su- uh, items as soon as possible. Okay? Place those who can be removed immediately in a red tag area so they that easy to remove later on. Usually sa workplace ito kapag maramihan. So may ilalagay ka sa area, ng red tag area. So, pag di na ito kailangan, di ba? So ito yung mga possible na for pull out, for removing. Keep the working floor clean of materials for those that are used for production. Isa so, sa mga ano na to workplace na. No, pero siyempre, no, pagka nag-aayos ka rin, maging maayos ka rin. No, hindi lang yung basta sorting, nakakalat ka rin. Eh, problem. Oh, ano rin yun? Diba? Ano ka rin? Maging maayos ka rin when it comes to that. Next, set in order. Since, since na-organize mo na, na-sort mo na siya, so isi-set in order natin siya. It's sometimes known as 310. Okay? Seton is the putting all necessary items to the optimal place for fulfilling their function in the workplace. So, making the workflow smooth and easy. That's our goal. So, for example, na, i-sort na natin siya. I-order mo siya. Pwede, oh, ganito yung level niya or ganito yung sa lalagyan niya o saan ba natin ilalagay. Okay, i-order mo siya. Oh, for example, ito yung, di ba may category? O, oh, so ganito siyang location. O, oh, so ganito siyang location. Tama? Okay, so madami ka ng folder. So, for example, sa files, o sa Android ba yan ilalagay? O may order ka ngayon. O kung sa music yan, doon yan. Okay? Meron siyang designated doon. May folder din ng mga kung ano-ano music na album o ano. Tama? Okay? So, implementation. Arrange workstation such a way as tooling or equipment is in the close proximity. O for example, um, siya sabi ng set in order, nag-agree sa yung mga uh, ano natin. For example, ito ay kinategorize natin for hardware. Uh, yung hardware tools o ito naman yung para sa mga ano yung mga ibang gamit so isa-certain mo siya kung saan mo siya ilalagay okay isa-certain mo din i-order mo din kung ano yung mga purpose nila okay in easy to reach spot in a logical order adapted to the work perform place components according to their use and are the frequently used components and being the needs to the workplace for example ito ay madalas na gamitin okay so lagi mo sa uh, sa pwesto na mas makikita kasi nagagamit nga. Pero hindi naman nagagamit, medyo itago mo. Okay? Para hindi naman lahat nakalabas. Okay? So kung yan ay uh, nandyan na sa labas, eh syempre, nandun pa rin yung sorting number one. Ayusin mo pa rin. No? And of course, to better way, sabi nga dito, use clear labels, marks, or hints so that the items could easy to return to the correct location so that it is easy to spot the missing item. Lagyan mo ng label. Hindi yung pwedeng nandyan na laang. Okay? Lagyan mo ng label. Di ba sa files, nagliginig pa tayo? Music. Okay. Lecture for per se. Tama ba ako? Okay? Kasi, ino-order natin. Hindi lang tayo nagkakategorize, nag-order din tayo. Label. para sa kusina yan. No? Sabi nga sa FB, size na matanda ka na, eh, puro spices na lang ang hinano mo. 
spices ang tawag, tawag ba dito ang binibili mo sa grocery. Okay? So ngayon makita mo doon sa spices. Oh, ito um cumin powder, curry powder, salt, pepper. So lalagyan mo ng label, naka-order. And nasa 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 na na bungad yung mga madadalas, yung mga asin, paminta, dahon ng laurel. Eh yung nasa likod yung mga Uh, spices lang na specific lang na minsan lang naman gagamitin. So, yun, para magkaroon kayo ng illustration about set in order. Okay? Arrange all necessary items so that they can be easily selected for use. Next, shine. Say so. Okay? okay? Linis. Okay? Cleaning. Sweeping or cleaning and inspecting the workplace. tools and machinery on a regular basis. Linis ka. Linis ka ng bahay mo. Okay? Linisin mo yung workplace mo. Linisin mo yung laboratory mo. Pati files mo, linisin mo. Tama? Goals. Improves the production process efficiently and safety. Reduce waste, prevents errors, and defects. Maayos eh. Kung baga, walang hazards. Okay? Keep the workplace safe and easy to work with. Kasi ang hirap naman, nagtatrabaho ko, parang may something na ang dumi, may nakakasagaban, di ba? Eh, mahirap yon. Keeping the workplace clean and pleasing to work with. Tandaan nyo, pag hindi malinis, eh, apektado ang productivity of work mo. Eh, lalo na kung ang workplace mo may amoy. Okay? Di ba? May, may maalingasaw na amoy. O sabihin natin chemical or may odor man lang na unnecessary or may basura. Eh, di ka talaga makakapag, makapagtrabaho ng maayos niyan kasi na-de-distract ka. Ganun naman din dito sa digital files natin. O kung hindi malinis yan, hindi na-recycle bin. O, paano ka makakapag-store ngayon ng mga bagong files? Eh, punong-puno na yung hard disk mo. Eh, hindi ka pa nag-delete. Hindi ka pa nag-empty uh, recycle bin. ba? Diba? O saan mo ngayon lalagay? Ipapwesta sa desktop mo, saan pwesta sa files mo? Hindi eh, ang gulo-gulo. ba? Diba? Tapos hindi pa naka-organize. So, keeping the workplace clean and pleasing. When in place, anyone not familiar to the environment must be able to detect any problems within 15 meters. So, implementation. Clean the workplace and equipment on a daily basis. Actually, ang paglilinis, everyday yan. No? Another appropriate cleaning interval. Inspect the workplace and equipment while cleaning. O, hindi naman pwedeng basa-basa linis. Baka mamaya naman eh, Eh, magka magkaroon ka ng physical ano physical hazards, mechanical hazards or chemical hazards, okay? So palagi yung tatandaan na prevention is better than cure. Okay, standardize. So it's the process used to sort, order and clean. So ano yung nabanggit ko sa tatlo which is our goal to ensure the repetition of these practices. May standard. So, alam mo na mag-sort, alam mo na mag-order, alam mo na maglinis. Ngayon, gagawa ka na ng standard. Okay? Gagawa ka na ng procedure. Lalo na pag nasa, ikaw ay businessman, di ba? Ikaw ay ikot sa mga repairs. Pag sa standard ka na ngayon, okay? O, tulad na lang sa Jollibee. Okay? Sa Jollibee kasi may mga laminated sila. O, may mga 5A sila doon. No? Ito yung paano yung paglinis. Paano paglagay ng champ burger. Paano ilagay itong chicken joy. O, oh, di ba? May standard. Okay, yun yung ginagawa nila. And may flowchart ka. For example, sa business. O, gawa ka flowchart. Paano yung proseso ng gawa mo? Standards. Okay? So, ganun po yun. Okay? Sa paggawa sa mga repair. Ano standards? O, number one. O, syempre, mag i Job order. Mga gamit. Okay? O, ayusin yan. And then, release. O, standard. Okay? Implementation. Develop a way structure that will support the new practices. the part of the daily routine. Okay? Pag may nag-break dyan, ibig sabihin, may problema. ba? Diba? May itang, isang tao mo, ba? Diba? Bin-break niya yung standard natin, o, oh, eh, possible na magkamali. ba? Diba? Maapektoan ang business ninyo. Mag- yung workplace ninyo, yung trabaho po ninyo. And personally, you standardize yourself. ba? Diba? It's a part of self-discipline. And sure knows your responsibilities of performing of these three S. Sorting, organize, or cleaning. Use photos and visual control to keep everything as it could be. Yung nasabi ko kanina sa Jollibee. May mga lamitated siya kahit McDo, kahit mga fast food. O kahit sa trabaho. Gusto mo may printed pa. O ganito procedure 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? Para mas maalala to keep reminded na ito yung standard. Ito yung rule. Okay? So use photos and visual. Nabangit ko na. Review the 5S. The status. Regularly. May audit checklist pa yon, May evaluation pa yon, Okay? 
And lastly is sustain. Shitsuke. So sustain is to develop the process of self-discipline to the workers to ensure that the 5S is followed. Okay? So implementation. Organize training sessions, perform regular audits, uh, implement improvements whenever possible. Okay. So sabi natin yung 1, 2, 3, nagawa na. So standard ka number 4. So para, ma, para, ma, para ma, ano to, maging successful to, magsusustain. That's what they call sustainability. Consistency is the key. Okay. Kung hindi magagawa yung consistency ng standards ng tatlo, hindi effective ang 5 as a workplace mo. Kung personal discipline mo, kung hindi yan nag-work nag out, eh wala kang disiplina sa sarili mo. Di ba? Hindi, parang ningas kugon ka. Okay? Sa laboratory, ganun din. Sa, sa business mo. Sa mga files mo. Okay? So kasi na in-audit to, lalo na sa mga workplace, in-evaluate din yan. And ngayon, makita nyo na ngayon, dito sa three, pag na-implement by four, by standards, na-sustain, okay, makita dyan, o oh, ano ba dapat natin i-improve? Ano ba yung mga concerns? Okay? Ano pa ba dapat idagdag, ibawas, or whatsoever that will work in in your workplace? Okay? So, yun po yung self-discipline by sustaining. Okay? Kasi napapag-usapan. Okay? Hindi lang yung, ay, gagawin ko lang to. Kasi every time yung nagagawa, may naiisip na ideya paano i-improve. Another methodology, which is ma-apply pa rin dito sa 5S. Kaya pag ginawa nyo to, productive. Okay? Efficient. Okay? Smooth ang gawa. Okay? So, yan yung ating 5S. Ngayon, may papakita kong video about sa 5S pa rin. Okay? Hi there, I'm Ron Pereira of Denver Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to this first module of our 5S course. Now, longtime Gemba Academy customers have likely seen our original 5S course, which was recorded around six years ago. Well, we've decided to refresh this course with some new examples, including an actual 5S case study with our friends over at FedEx Office. Well, specifically, by the end of this module, you'll know what 5S is and why it's so important no matter what type of industry you work in. And finally, you'll know where the original concepts of 5S started. And as a small hint, it doesn't seem to be Japan like so many think it to be. Okay, well, let's get started by first answering the question, what is 5S? Well, formally defined, 5S is a method of creating a clean and orderly workplace that exposes waste and makes abnormalities immediately visible. As an aside, this particular image has an interesting story behind it. The man on his hands and knees polishing the floor just happens to be the president of this manufacturing company. You see, at this company, nearly all employees, including senior management, come to work 30 minutes early every day in order to clean and tidy things up. Oh, and one other small fact, these 30 minutes are unpaid and completely voluntary. But as it turns out, 5S is so ingrained into this company's culture that nearly all employees partake in this early morning routine. Now, with this said, while cleaning is an extremely important part of 5S, it must be said that 5S is far more than a housekeeping initiative like so many confuse it to be. You see, as we learned earlier, one of the main purposes of 5S is to be able to identify abnormalities. In other words, if the place we work in is an unorganized mess, chances are we'll rarely be able to spot when something isn't right. But if we have things neat, clean, and tidy, we're far more likely to identify when something isn't right. Okay, well, now that we have a better understanding of what 5S is, let's learn about its origins. Now, when someone refers to 5S, they're generally referring to five Japanese words that start with S. But it would seem, contrary to what many people assume, the origins of 5S may not be Japanese after all. In fact, Henry Ford's Can Do program, which stands for Cleaning Up, Arranging, Neatness, Discipline, and Ongoing Improvement, seems to be the obvious precursor to what we call 5S today. And that actually seems to be very logical since the Japanese studied Ford's methods shortly after the war ended. But to be sure, the 5S we're focused on in this course and in most lean manufacturing situations is based on five Japanese words. They are seri, which is commonly translated as sort, seitone, which means to straighten, seiso, which means to sweep or shine, 
Seketsu, which actually means to sanitize, but is most commonly referred to as standardized today. And finally, Shitsuke, which means self-discipline or sustain. Now, later in the module, we'll dive a bit deeper into each of these five steps. But before then, let's spend some time talking about why 5S is so important, no matter if you work in a machine shop, office, or hospital. Now, the first reason 5S is so important is its impact on safety. Now, there can be no debating the fact that a cluttered and chaotic work area is often an unsafe work area. Well, 5S at its core should always focus on creating and maintaining an organized and safe workplace. The second reason 5S is so important is it helps us identify and eliminate waste or muda. Now, most people are amazed at how much more productive they are once their work area is decluttered, cleaned, and organized. Again, these people I'm referring to could be a machine shop operator or an accountant or a nurse who works 12 long hours each night and just wants things to be in their place when they need them. Now, the third reason 5S is so beneficial is the fact that it's low cost and very high impact. You don't need to spend a lot of money to improve 5S. In fact, you could very well make some money if you sell items you no longer need or use. Next, done correctly, 5S gets everyone in the company involved. It doesn't matter if you wear a suit and tie or a hard hat, 5S knows no boundary. So it's the perfect opportunity to bring folks that wouldn't normally interact with one another together. To be sure, this type of collaboration makes companies much stronger. Another reason 5S is so important is the simple fact that adherence to standards is a key to Kaizen. And since 5S is a standard in and of itself, it goes without saying, if you can't do 5S, you can't do Lean. In fact, 5S is a key building block for most of the Lean tools and concepts used today, such as One Piece Flow, Total Productive Maintenance, and Single Minute Exchange of Dyes. As they say, without 5S, you can indeed forget the rest. Okay, well, now that we have a better understanding of why 5S is so important, let's discuss each step of the process. But before then, let me just say that in coming modules of this course, we're going to explain exactly how to go about executing each of these steps in your workplace. Well, the first step is sort. Now, this step basically challenges us to get rid of the things we don't need or use. Now, this can be a very hard step for some people since they like to keep everything they've ever come in contact with. But this type of hoarding attitude only leads to clutter and disorganization. So if we don't need it, we need to get rid of it. Now, to help facilitate the sort process, lean practitioners often use red tags similar to the ones shown in this picture. Well, rest assured, we'll be covering everything you need to know about red tagging in a coming module since, while it's not a complicated concept, there are many traps that you need to know about. Okay, well, the second step is straighten. So once we've cleared out all the items we don't need, we need to straighten up what's left. Now, the mantra of a place for everything and everything in its place fits this step perfectly. Now, here are some examples of nicely straightened drawers and toolboxes. If some tools or items were missing, it would be obvious to the owner, giving them an opportunity to find or replace the items before he or she actually needed them. Okay, well, the third step of 5S is sweep. Now, this step is also referred to as shine. Now, this is probably the most misunderstood step of all, since most assume this step simply means to grab a broom and clean up. And while good old-fashioned sweeping is definitely important, this step is far more than just cleaning. You see, the main principle behind this step is to clean to inspect. In other words, if you find yourself sweeping up the same mess day after day, you should do your very best to eliminate the source of the dirt. Now, here's an example of sweeping in action. As it turns out, in this example, the sources of the dirt and grime were attacked as part of a total productive maintenance Kaizen event, further demonstrating how 5S and other lean principles are closely related. Okay, well the fourth step of the 5S process is standardize. Now this step is focused on creating standards so abnormalities are easily recognized. Things like checklists and audits are very helpful. Also, some companies even engage in corporate 5S competitions where the monthly winner gets to hold the local 5S trophy for the month, while the last place team gets the opportunity to partake in a brown bag lunch with the general manager of the facility as they explain their plan to improve. 
Now, one of my favorite examples of standardization is from our friends over at FastCap who use magnets to ensure the items on their kitchen area table go back to the same place. Now, let's check in with Paul Akers to see what we mean. So we like to say leave everything better than you found it, but we've actually improved that saying. We don't call it that anymore occasionally. We call it the next guy. All you want to be thinking about in life is the next guy, not yourself, the next person that comes here. How are you setting them up to succeed mm. or fail? So I want to leave it clean. All I have to do is grab my Windex, spray a little Windex back, put it back. Notice it's all magnetic. It goes back magnetically. It's pretty cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> pretty cool how that works. That was okay? not there yeah. at your last facility. I know. This is all new. Okay. So now I wipe my area off, but I wipe a little bit more in respect and leaving it better than we found it. I stand up, I wipe off the handles here in case I got some grease on there, push the chair back in, and the place is left perfect. So if I told you that I wanted you to leave it this way, would it be easy for you to do it? Yep. Why? Because you don't have to walk all the way over there to get the Windex, it's right in front of you. Right. Right? So we make processes easy. If you do that, then people are gonna be able to comply. So now check out the salt and pepper. Is that? This is very cool. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now the cool thing here is, we do this for fun, you don't need to do this. But you can't put the salt in the pepper area because it's reverse Pokey polarization. Okay, man. Air Look proof. at that. <laughs> Everything is dialed in. Just like that, we have Kanban levels. When the salt and pepper gets down to this level, you replace it. Even this is magnet, magnetized. Look at this. It goes right in place. Even this is magnetized. So instead of having this basket sitting like there, like most people would have, right? You can't, you can't make a mistake, and it's actually fun to do that because it snaps back into place. Isn't that totally cool? <laughs> This is what oh work gosh. should be like. Now, as Paul said, you don't have to use magnets and go to this level of standardization if that doesn't make sense for your business. But we do encourage you to think about what would happen if all aspects of your business were as standardized as FastCap's kitchen area. So if you happen to be watching this video with a group, I'd really encourage you to pause a video in order to discuss FastCap's kitchen. Do you think this level of standardization would work in your company? Well, feel free to pause now and discuss. We'll wait on you. Okay, well, the last step of the 5S process is self-discipline. Now, the key to this step is to apply positive tension. In other words, if your 5S improvements are to sustain, it must be made clear that this is how we intend to operate as a company. Now, it's similar to a rope. If a rope is pulled tightly and someone comes along and tugs on it, we get an immediate response. However, if the rope is loose and we pull on it, we may not realize it as quickly. So this really gets back to being able to identify abnormalities. With positive tension, we can identify issues immediately. With loose or no tension, we can't tell there's an issue until the damage is already done. All right. Well, this wraps up this 5S overview module. Obviously, we've only skinned the topic of 5S in this video, but rest assured, by the end of this course, you and your organization will know exactly how to deploy 5S throughout your company, no matter what type of industry you work in. Now, throughout this course, we're gonna take you on a deep dive into topics like red tagging, standardization, visual controls, and much more. And we're also going to follow a real-life case study with our friends over at FedEx Office who were kind enough to allow us to film an actual 5S case study. In fact, we actually filmed two different events. Now, the first was of a storage closet, and the second was of a gentleman's desk. Now, we'll summarize each of these events in individual videos while also sharing certain aspects of each event as the course progresses. In fact, in the next video, we're going to visit with the FedEx office team in order to learn more about why they want to practice 5S within their workplace. So, we'll speak to you soon. Yeah, okay. So we're done with the 5S methodology. At the same time, um, to end this uh, part two of the occupational health and safety na procedure natin today. Okay? Uh, may questions pa po ba? Wala na po.